right, so oh, welcome to Sherwood Defense again. If you like any of these videos, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. I know it's been a little over a month since I've done my last video, but um, today I'm going a little bit away from firearms, but you know, it's all about uh, being prepared. And so I'm going to show you some of the things that I have for preparedness and uh, it, it's a pretty good, pretty big collection of camping stuff and stuff like that that I've used for different situations for years. And, you know, camping is basically practice for uh, being prepared for, you know, if, if uh, you got to go. All, all of this stuff, everything, you know, practice, you know, practice with your firearms, practice camping. Uh, when you're practicing, it's, it's fun, but when it's not fun you want to be prepared and know how to use all your stuff and you know uh, no no piece of equipment is useful at all unless you know how to use it um, so without further ado i'm going to start showing you some stuff here okay so i'm just going to start you know just kind of with a quick go around you know we've got cooking and food all the different um, ways we've got communications uh, we've got you know all the stuff you need which is mainly you know a lot of camping stuff you know from you know uh, hunting stuff for actually uh, getting animals and and whatnot um, you got to have your first aid gear you know just some personal items you know and the little bag there I've actually got you know compass so I've got a satellite communicator um, and all that some personal items pants and layers big puffy jacket and here are several different uh, sizes and types of uh, backpacks from uh, one of my army backpacks to you know super lightweight stuff there from marmot another smaller one from the the same series as that and uh, you know tactical pack that is something that you might take to the range uh, but they're all backpacks and they're all useful. Sleeping stuff. Yeah, I've got some uh, uh, two different size sleeping bags. One of them's like a 40 degree sleeping bag, and the other one's, you know, just you know summertime use sleeping bag. Uh, half size sleeping mat underneath, and then this one here is actually a down uh, blanket. It's got snaps on it. It's pretty nice. Um, and then you know the emergency size stuff. You know the mylar blankets. Um, and then we'll move over here to some, you know, I've got a camp chair, uh, a mini machete, and uh, the other black thing next to the mini machete is actually a fold foldable bow saw, and then an uh, uh, entrenching tool, but, you know, civilian version, it's a little bit smaller than the army version, and uh, various forms of shelter, um, you know, a, a, a full-on four-season tent for mountaineering from heart, Mountain Hardware for big enough for two people. And then here's a super lightweight. I don't have it in the original bag because I never packed it that way. Um, the thing in the orange bag is actually the rain fly. And then that's the rest of the tent right there, uh, including, you know, the tent. And then the little bag above it's got pegs and poles and stuff like that in it. And then here is just a REI bivy. Um, and then we're going to get into the, to this, this is an emergency bivy. It's made out of mylar, but it's a bivy just like that one there. And then here are tents, pop-up tents that are made with the same mylar as the emergency blankets. And then over here into the tarp setup, which requires a couple of uh, hiking poles. And then just some tent pegs and a nice uh, nylon tarp. Okay, now I'm in the shop here right now. It's kind of a wreck. It's been kind of slow. I've been kind of getting ready for winter and trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest. And, of course, uh, no no prepper is complete without uh, some sort of firearms. Um, you know, in the United States, we have that right. And if you have the right, you know, you should use it. And uh, so I'm going to go over, just point out some of the stuff I have here in the shop and just kind of... You know give you an idea of uh you know what may or may not be as useful in a bug out situation or if you're at home and 
You know, who says you always, you don't have to bug out in every emergency. Sometimes it's shelter in place. Um, and if you're sheltering in place, you know, your whole food situation can change. You don't have to have all the super expensive emergency food. You've got ramen, you've got, um, uh, you know, mashed potatoes, you know, the powdered mashed potatoes, powdered milk. There's a lot of stuff that'll keep for a long time that you don't need uh, to spend 10 bucks for one meal. That's, you know, the 10 bucks for one meal is kind of the camping stuff. But a lot of the a lot of the prepper food that you buy from uh, any of the many companies out there these days is, is really, really expensive. And I, I'm not knocking it or anything. I have some myself, it's handy. You can pick it up and grab it, take it with you. You can rotate it through um, your camping again, which is your practice for being prepared if you do have to bug out. So let's let's uh, look at some of the firearms, and I'll just kind of let you know what what I think. It's I think some of the stuff's really not real useful, um, but it just depends on what you're willing to carry. If you're in a car, if you're in your house, of course you can have everything. If you're bugging out you know you're going to go with lightweight you know is it winter time is it summertime are you in a mountainous region or are you in a desert region uh are you by yourself uh how how much help do you have you know you, remember if you're bugging out you got to carry this stuff you know gas isn't going to last forever if we get into a situation where folks are going to have to bug out you can you can forget about some of the some of the comforts that you've been used to you're going to be on your feet and you're going to be carrying backpacking type stuff and you're not going to be be able to carry all this super heavy stuff all right so you know here you've got you know an ar uh, that's radical arms ar um this is a 12 gauge bullpup you know uh right ar useful maybe you know if it's going to be one of the only things you take um 12 gauge bullpup you know probably not so much you know, here's a, a, a high point carbine in nine millimeter. Um, you know, if it's all you got, you know, take it. You know, if you don't have a whole bunch of stuff, take it. You know, here's a 7mm Mod 8 youth hunting rifle. You know, hunting rifle is always going to be a good choice. You know, if it's the only thing you have, take it. Um, you know, I'm going to concentrate on the 22s here a little bit because realistically, they're light. And with practice, you can defend yourself with it. You can take game with it. You can do whatever. It doesn't weigh anything. And even as expensive as ammo is right now, it's still cheap compared to anything else. You can carry a lot of ammo with a 22. Just, you know, just something off the shelf. You know, here's uh, 500 rounds of uh, Norma um high performance target this is a little bit more expensive uh, uh there's cheaper stuff out there you know uh, you know 50 rounds a, a wolf in a box you know um you know doesn't weigh hardly anything and it, you can pack it all away you can throw it in baggies you can do whatever you want you the point is you can carry a lot of ammo um you know move over here to pistols you know yeah of course the pistols are going to be just fine um nine millimeters fine you can carry a, a reasonable amount of ammo but you know again even a 22 is going to be fine um it, move over here you know here's an ar-10 you know is that what i would probably take if i was having a bug out probably not you know weighs weighs uh oh as it's set up right now about, about nine pounds it's not the lightest thing in the world you know and you compare it to this thing here you know this weighs like maybe four and a half five pounds I, I i doubt i didn't weigh it um another hunting rifle again same thing fine 30 out six uh law enforcement m4 again they're light you know if you can carry if you have the ammo and you can carry it fine you know um and here's a bolt action 22 that's another really good choice to take with you um cz scorpion yeah it's small you could pack it uh would i honestly what would i take because I have the ammo, I would probably take this. I would probably take my law enforcement M4 and a 22. But again, I've got three other family members, and so so we're gonna we're gonna have both. Um, but um, you know, I'm gonna settle on the basic 
22. And of course, you can't forget, if you're going to take it with you, you need to be able to maintain it. So you need to grab you a cleaning kit. You know, here, here's an example of one, you know, if it's in a molly bag. Everything in here that you need for multiple, multiple, uh, um, multiple, uh, calibers and uh you know as you can see with the pistol grip i have on here i actually keep my lubricating fluid in there but you know again just some ideas you know what are you willing to carry and i guarantee you it's a lot less than you think it is unless uh you spend a, a good amount of time in the woods okay we're going to talk a little bit about communications now and here's Here's some basic stuff. You want to at least be able to communicate with your family. Um, you know, if you're going out to, you know, for nature calls or whatever, even if you're staying together, it's nice to have a little handy talkie here. The I'm a, I'm also a ham radio operator, so I, you know these are all ham radios here, and uh, you know this uh, Yesu FT2D does. Uh, Two meters and 70 centimeters, it does packet, um, it does uh, APRS, uh, Greek, you know, I think I may kind of go over some of the stuff in more detail in the in the future. This is a, a older Radio Shack, uses a single AA battery, not much power, 200 milliwatts. This thing, it's variable between one and five watts, and this is a uh, one of the cheap Chinese radios that goes one to uh, five watts as well and that actually will uh, work on two meters and 70 centimeters as well um, also family radio service radios i've got a couple of those um, uh, gmrs radios you know gmrs you have to get licensed for but it's 35 bucks for 10 years you know and then you know because i'm a ham i also have uh you know, FT, uh, this is a Yesu FT817. It's a 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and all HF radio. And, uh, you know, I've got an antenna tuner in here. And you also have to, if you're going to be using this, you have to have a separate antenna. And this right here is actually a little amplifier. And you want to have spare, you want to have spare batteries for all your stuff too. And then this is just some other test stuff that doesn't matter. I've got them packed in nice little small cases. And uh, so that's one thing with communications. Okay, give you some some examples of food. Uh, you know, your your basic camp food. I think these things are like ten, eleven bucks a piece. So that's not realistic. But hey, if you if you have it and you walk it through, uh, you know, you can you can get stuff like uh, nibble food. You know, little uh, sesame snaps. These are actually pretty good. They got uh, you know few pretty good calories in them uh, just keep you going when you're on the move these uh, big block bars I mean this sucker weighs this this thing weighs a pound easy what's it say on it yeah uh, yeah one pound two ounces yeah <laughs> 22,400 calories that's uh, that's a uh, easy two days worth of food for one person or you can even stretch it longer than that you know cheesy lasagna all these come in other flavors and then you can get these little emergency packs that here's 16 servings of four different meals so heck that'd serve you know that'd serve uh you know a meal to four people um every day for what four days you know six uh, 16 serving you know one meal uh for four people for four days and you know this one comes with looks like creamy pasta and vegetables tomato basil soup with pasta and then creamy lasagna and savory stroganoff you know not, it's not gourmet food but it'll keep you alive um so these little packs you know this is like a 20 dollar pack so here you go this is this is uh you know four times one of these for 20 bucks you know and one of these is you know for this is a, a meal for two people it's two servings in one of these bags and this is four servings in four different bags inside this pack right here. So that's definitely a lot better. But, you know, and if you don't have to bug out, then, you know, canned goods and all that kind of stuff is just fine. Bugging out with ramen is just fine. That's That was one of my go-to foods for the longest time. Okay, water. 
Water is a very important item, and you're not going to be able to trust it if you do have to bug out. If you don't have to bug out, then you should be having water storage in your house. You know, if you own your own house, you know, I highly recommend getting yourself a cistern uh, in between your house and uh, your water supply. And that way, um, you ensure that, you know, it's always being used and recycled, so it's not just sitting there getting um, stagnant, you know, while you're sitting around. So, but if you have to bug out, you know, you need a filter, you know, or you need a uh, uh, chemical water pur purification. These are aqua tabs, other brands out there. Iodine's another option. Another plus with iodine is iodine will help you be um, a little resistant to radiation as well. Now, okay, another thing. Now, if you got all this food over here, you're going to have to cook it. And how are you going to cook it? You're going to cook it with a stove of some sort. There's lots of different options of stoves. You've got everything from a, from a alcohol stove like this. You know, a little bit. This thing probably weighs about a couple ounces, maybe, maybe three ounces. Um, and it nests nice in a kettle. You know, again, you need dishes too. You know, army mess kit or any kind of camp stuff at all. Um, alcohol is good for because you can find it everywhere you can use Everclear you can use denatured alcohol you can use rubbing alcohol you know they're they'll burn a lot cleaner if you use denatured alcohol but you know who knows if you're going to be able to find denatured alcohol when you're when you're trying to survive then another type is these whisper lights these use white gas and they also make some versions that use uh, um, kerosene and alcohol you know the multi international versions of them and you store the fuel in these things, which you can actually, you know, hook them to the outside of a pack so that they're not inside with the possibility of spilling and just hang them off with a car carabiner. And then you've got the little rocket stoves and, you know, which can nest in here. And these, these little, these little rocket stoves, um, uh, with the, you know, with the cup and everything, they just use the, the little mini canisters that screw onto the bottom. Um. Pack up really small, as you can see. Good for a short term, um, but you know how you know how are we going to find those canisters for very? We're not going to get, be getting them for very long, so you're going to have to have some alternative um, way to heat stuff up too. You also got these little emergency stoves. They use you know chemical tabs. This thing unfolds and you know becomes a you know a, a uh, great to set your stuff on and you know it comes with a little pack. These things are like five or six bucks or so and then this is this house has a rocket stove with a little bit bigger fuel canister and it's it's a two-person kit to the this is a one-person kit this actually has you know two bowls each for two people and even comes with a little fold-out silverware thing that you can use and uh so you know the, the whole idea is is uh all your camping stuff is prepping stuff too so don't 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 underestimate it um Another thing you're going to need, you're going to need fire, you know. Here's some storm matches. I get these from, you know, a store up in Jackson. You can get them at any Walmart or anywhere. I think, I don't know how much they should be, but I, I pay like $4, you can say $4.58. A little can of, little can of uh, storm matches. And they actually put the, actually put the striker right on the side of it and just in case you didn't know these strikers when they get wet they don't work that good but when they dry out they go back to working just fine um and th these are the windproof kind that have all the you know they're if you can look at the look at the picture there you know there's there's lots of startup stuff so it's not going to blow out once it starts to light so you're good to go on that you know you know the the next go-to option is uh who, who doesn't have 10 of these sitting around somewhere you know Keep one everywhere, you know, and all your stuff, you know, obviously away from your kids and everything. You don't want them burning the house down, but there's that. Um, here's another way you can do food. This is a bear container that I have from uh, um, all my camping years and whatnot. And this, if you look here, this, these, I, I've just mixed some stuff up. This is like taters and it's got bell peppers and stuff in there. You know, I always save these little packets, you know, pizza packets, ketchup packets, whatever. You know, I get coffee and these little things right there, all that stuff. Look, I even got some chili in there. And look, that's eggs. That's egg powder right there. 
and some tea and whatnot and you know plastic silverware you know salt and shaker salt and pepper shaker you know so you know you don't have to buy the expensive stuff you know i i used to honestly go buy oh hang on okay when going back into the food thing i i honestly i honestly uh used to make my own emergency food and i would just go to the grocery store and i would buy like the potatoes au gratin packets and uh measure them out in smaller uh in smaller quantities and uh put them in baggies and take plenty of ramen and you know you know you, there, there's all kinds of ways you can do that macaroni and cheese packets all that stuff's good forever forget about the expiration dates on them i mean i'm not saying forget about expiration dates but a lot of those you know recommended by dates or recommended by for taste or whatever maybe they get stale or whatever we're talking about survival here we're not talking about um you know whether whether or not it's it's going to taste like it's fresh out of the factory and all that obviously you know perishable items like meat and all that kind of stuff you know you don't want to do that even cans are perishable especially if you if you bang them or dent them or anything like that so canned goods and all that stuff are great for if you're going to shelter in place and that sort of thing. 